Now, I love stories like this one. Coming up, an interview with the mysterious disappearing rocker of the 80s. He had a massive number one hit in 1985. Great song. A tune that he co-wrote and recorded in less than a day. It was to be the theme to a big movie. But the song was actually written about an inspirational journey that was being forged at the time by a disabled man. More on that in the interview. Uh, the song was going to be a front runner for the Oscars that year, but it was pulled from contention. Find out why uh, next. And then at the height of his career, this rocker was betrayed by someone in his inner circle. And litigation stopped him from making music for almost 18 years. But during this time, he disappeared from the spotlight and he worked a regular job to raise his kids. He's going to tell you the inspirational story coming up next. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you remember the Contra cheat code to get you 30 extra lives by heart, you're going to dig this channel of pure musical nostalgia. Make sure to subscribe below right now. Click the big red button and the bell so you know when our latest interviews come out. Also, check us out at Patreon and our latest merch that helps us keep it a daily channel. Ah, oh, got a great one for you today from one of... The most spectacular voices of the mid 80s. It's our latest edition of Revelations, where featured artists go deep on their greatest songs and albums. Stories uh, that you truly won't hear anywhere else. You know, we all have those beloved songs from our youth. You know, before the negativity and the pretentiousness of the world crept in and made us second guess ourselves or our favorites in entertainment. Songs that motivated us, took us to a higher level. This is one of those songs song where the singer left it all out on the field. A vocal extravaganza that took this song straight to number one in 85. Talking about St. Ole's Fire, Man in Motion. The parentheses anthem for rocker John Parr. Take me my future lie in fire. He wrote this with legendary producer, songwriter, extraordinary David Foster. This song along with Eye of the Tiger, Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. And here I go again. Here I go again on my own. Made us who were lucky enough to grow up in the 80s feel that we could do anything. It was just a different time where music and movies and TV shows weren't so dark and neurotic. Where entertainment was actually focused on motivating and uplifting and inspiring you. I can see it. This song was my anthem as a kid, and I was so excited to do this interview because my own sons love this song now. John Parr is truly an amazing, inspiring guy. He was making things happen in the 80s with his hit Naughty Naughty. naughty, naughty. And then this one. And then many soundtrack songs from The Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Three Men and a Baby. Baby in my life, the minute I saw you. American Anthem, to name a few. And he was rolling. But then he disappeared from the music business for nearly 18 years. He couldn't record or make music. So he had to take a different job to support his family. He's going to tell you the whole story coming up next, uh, including missing out on an Oscar. This, this song was the front runner for the Oscar that year. And what he really wrote this number one hit about is very inspirational. He actually never saw the movie Seeing the Most Fire before he wrote this song. Now, as we get into this interview, I do want to thank our sponsor, Zenny Eye, where the glasses that I always wear on here. Right now, you can get up to 80% off regular retail prices. Everything from reading glasses to progressive lenses to transition lenses, sunglasses, blue blocks to protect your eyes from digital blue light. It's just amazing. Make sure to click on our info button right up here to get the best price, to get the best deal. Here's John Parr. Saying almost fire man in motion. Over your career, I mean, you've written and performed the theme song for... I think it's 10 major motion pictures, including American Anthem and The Running Man, Three Men and a Baby. But your biggest, of course, was the number one smash, Shane Almost Fire, Man in Motion, from the movie The Same Name, came out in 85. Mm -hmm. 
Tell me about how that came together, because your performance on Naughty Naughty caught the attention of Foster. I knew something of him, but not the actual iceberg of him. I mean, you know, one of the biggest of all time. And uh, he phoned me and said, I really like Naughty Naughty. Do you want to come over to L.A. and help me write a song for a movie? And I, wow, yes, yeah, sure. So we went, I went to this little studio in L.A. called The Lighthouse, and David was there. David said, I'm going to show you a video. And it was a little local news uh, story from Vancouver about a kid who'd broken his back uh, a year before, a guy called Rick Hansen, Canadian fella. And he said, I'm going, to, I'm going to get in my wheelchair and I'm going to wheel it around the world and raise money for spinal research. And I'm going to call the tour the Man in Motion Tour. And this video is going and the hairs on the back of my neck are going. And I just went back to the hotel that night and I just wrote the story of this young man crossing deserts over mountains. And for me, I knew St. Elmo's fire was a, a freak of nature that, that burns in the sky. It's when phosphorus glows in the sky. So to me, he's wheeling up a mountain, looking at his dream burning in the sky. And that's, that was it. And I insisted on calling it Man in Motion. And because it was such a tight deadline, I don't think the movie company noticed. And so you'd never get that through normally, you know. Rackets, Man in Motion. And that song inspires people even today because they might not know what it's about, but we were so energized by this incredible story that actually went on to make real history, you know. Well, and you never saw the movie. No, I, I met Joel Schumacher and he told me what, because he wrote it, he told me what it was about. You wrote and edited the song pretty much in about 24 hours. Yeah, it was really quick. We, we wrote it on the Friday. We did all the recording, I think, on the Saturday. And that was a revelation to me, you know, because all the cream of, of the of world-class musicians came in. You got Toto coming in. You got Jerry Hay coming in. And it was just three hours, three hours. I couldn't believe it, you know. And Umberto Gattica came in and mixed it. I remember getting Toto 4 and crying. I remember crying on my lounge carpet, thinking, these guys are doing everything I can do better. I'm never going to compete. And a year later, they're playing on my record and I'm touring with them. And we're friends. So anybody out there, man, never give up. Just... You know, keep plowing that furrow and never say never. That's right. That's right. Yeah, Steve Lukather on guitar, David Page and Steve Percaro on keyboards. And like you said, Jerry Hay on trumpet, Carlos Vega on drums. I mean, just a dream team. This is a song that uh, it creates so much euphoria. It's such an inspirational track. It makes you feel like you can... Overcome anything. But it was a gift. I think it was a gift from the universe or from God or whatever you choose it to be. I, I take no responsibility. I just, I, I had my arms open for it. I dreamed of this moment. And with the greatest producer in the world, you know, and, and still a friend to this day. I mean, how blessed am I? If you don't mind, I'd love just to go through some of the lyrics. The first verse I, I love because it's almost like, you're giving a little bit of advice to somebody who's down and out or up and coming. Growing up, you don't see the writing on the wall. Passing by, moving straight ahead, you knew it all. By, ahead, you knew it all. That's the empathy, but maybe sometime if you feel the pain, you you find you're all alone. Everything has changed. It puts it in motion. It really does. Uh, you know, play the game. You know you can't quit until it's won. Soldier on. Soldier on. The funny thing is, uh, I was very careful that Columbia Pictures thought those lyrics were about that movie. So when you see those kids in the movie, they're full of it. And, you know, like you say, moving straight ahead, they knew it all. You know, life wasn't hadn't bit them in the backside yet. And, of course... It's true, but it's entirely about a guy, 18 years old, and then suddenly he has a car wreck and he's in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. It, it, so it was always making that balance between, uh, you know, the dual-edged meaning of it, but it was always entirely 
the, the, the guy in the chair came first. The inspiration of Rick Hansen and what he accomplished and what he did that shows any of us that ordinary people or normal people it can touch greatness. Absolutely. Everybody's got value and it's just some people need to en- a bit more encouragement or whatever, you know, and, or a champion. Well, I love when you say you're just a prisoner and you're trying to break free. Today, there's a lot of those chasms in our way that we have to figure out a way to get past it. But the chorus is so big. It's so inspirational. I can see a new horizon underneath the blazing sky. I'll be where the eagle's flying higher and higher. It's got the, that big, big yeah. power course. In the 80s, these songs were all about building you up. Eye of the Tiger, uh, Burning Heart, uh, Man in Motion. You can do anything. My father was such a big influence on me, and it was all about, you know, doing it, making it happen, and, and, and never giving up. I love the second verse. It's always been very personal to me. I love the part where you say, burning up, don't know just how far that I can go. Soon be home, only just a few miles down the road. Always think of that lyric. It's only just a little bit more. Just keep pushing. Just keep pushing. I love that lyric. And then the payoff is I can make it. I know I can. You broke the boy in me but you won't break the man. It's been such an inspiration and such wisdom for me, and I'm sure for so many other people. Rick, in the days of telegrams, Rick Hansen sent me a, a telegram, and uh, he never used to wheel with the, uh, with the earbuds in. He would just wheel. And he wrote me a telegram. It said, when, I, when I've wheeled, to exhaustion and don't feel I can wheel another mile. I put the song on and put the headphones on and I go out and wheel another 20. And that was the biggest, that was the biggest sentence in that whole St. Elmo's Fire thing for me that, that, you know, it does that, you know. We all need it. We just need that encouragement, don't we? that inspiration. You know, in the chorus, you could have repeated what you said, but you say, I can climb the highest mountain, cross the wildest sea. I can feel the same almost fire burning in me. I can feel that almost fire burning in me. And then also I can hear the music playing. You're putting all these other ideas yeah. in. I love how you change it up that way. I, can hear the music playing. I, can see the I wrote that verse two years before it happened. He set off from Vancouver originally like three men and a dog waving him off nobody there and he wheeled back in a million people lying in the streets brass bands going did it did did it all that bit at that point we'd raised 18 million for spinal research and today it's 360 million Well, the bridge, too, it's such a powerful bridge. One of my favorite bridges in in all the 80s. Just once in his life, a man has his time. My time is now. I'm coming alive. Like That's like the biggest payoff bridge ever, man. So in, in the movie, Emilio has been really lusting after this girl, and he can never get her. She's got this other guy. And then she invites him to the house to meet the boyfriend and everything. And as, as he's leaving, she kind of grabs him and they have this big kiss. And she realizes she's made a mistake, but he's gone. And it's, that's, that was Emilio's time. But of course it wasn't. It was about Rick going through that tape and having done 25,000 miles, you know, but it fitted. A lot of people mixed up a lot of lyrics with the song. They thought that the... Uh, the wheels had to do with Demi Moore's uh, Jeep and stuff like that, you know. Then the end is just one of the great endings of an 80s anthem. Burning in me. Yeah, I can feel it burning. That vocal is so inspired. What did you do 
to prepare for that vocal. When I remember doing the vocal on Salamis Fire, going into the restroom and falling down on my knees, and I thank God for what I've been given. I knew in that moment that it was that. You know, whether other people did, I don't know, but I, I knew it wasn't, and it wasn't arrogance. I just felt, man, I, I just cannot top this. This is, this is it. You know, I've been given this. You know. Well, the music video with the Brat Pack actors, I read that you only had 24 hours to do it. You'd had a little experience in acting, uh, you know, coming up. Tell me about that experience. <laughs> but they didn't, they did not want me there and they did not want to be there. And because uh, they, they'd wrapped the movie and the, the set was going to be destroyed. Anyway, they rebuilt the bar and all the bit. And, um, you know, I mean, you, if you look at their faces, they're looking at me sideways, even on camera. You know, I mean, it, it's one of the things, I think Demi's at the, the jukebox and it says John walks down the steps and cheers Demi up. Well, I can think of a few ways of cheering Demi more up, but it wouldn't be lip syncing cinemas. <laughs> Cheesy 80s music videos. Yeah, man. But we became pals, and, and Rob and I, we, we've played on stage together. We've done a couple of duets. They're, they're frustrated musicians. They're, I, I, from memory, I think Demi did a show with us as well. So it went full circle from kind of this kind of antichrist from Yorkshire, you know, in, in the middle of Hollywood to he's okay. You know. Well, you were nominated for a Grammy Award for St. Elmo's Fire, uh, also yeah. in 85. And there was a rumor that St. Elmo's Fire, Man in Motion, was on par to be nominated for uh, an Academy Award. It's true, yeah. And then they discovered the song. It was written about uh, Rick a little bit. And so my understanding is that they thought it was going to be a front runner for the Oscar. Yeah, that was the, that was the talk. Everybody said it. The buzz was yes. But of course, I was very vocal all the time about Rick from day one. So it was like I was shooting myself in the foot, but who cares? It was a, it was for the right reason. St. Elmo's Fire, it's been covered by a lot of different artists, the Ataris and uh, one of the biggest selling artists ever, Garth Brooks. Do you have a favorite interpretation? Have you heard those? I've heard a few uh, symphony orchestra versions. It's a guy in England called David Essex who's a pop star in England in the, uh, yeah, he did a version. Well, it's been used in so much pop culture as well. The Simpsons. <laughs> Spider-Verse. And it's a no on the cape. I think it's cool. In commercials. When you can soar. When your song's in The Simpsons, that's that's when it's like, okay, it's over. You made it. That's like the pop culture touchstone of all time, right? Yeah. You did rewrite St. Elmo's Fire a little bit. Tim Tebow's Fire as a theme to the, the double Heisman winning quarterback during his NFL days with Denver Broncos. Tim Tebow's Fire. Well, you know, you left the music industry for many years. I found somebody that I loved and trusted in, in my uh, business side it was betraying me and uh, I gave him a second chance and he betrayed me again. And so uh, we went legal and it took me 19 years to win. It's very clever lawyers and everything. And the beauty was that we got two young boys and uh, I just got to be dad. I was one of those dads, you know, a bit too much, you know, the, the sports dads and mums that really kind of hot house their kids. And so I kind of threw myself into that. But we were mates as well. It was not just father, son. We got that, but it was also, we just hang together all the time. You know, we'd be driving all over the country doing, you know, doing competitions. And uh, it was just a wonderful time. At, at the worst of times and the best of times, you know, the, I lost my career. So it's like the hammer went down on the royalties. So I couldn't touch my royalties for 19 years. So I had huge debts and but, you know, and so I'd do anything. I'd go work in the wood shop. I'd go work on the building sites. Just to, and that was weird because I'd be in the wood shop and said I'm a fire would come on the radio and everybody in the wood shop would look at me French polishing, you know. It's like, uh, but, you know, it, it's, it was an honest job, you know, and, and we were putting food on the table. And, and, you know, I never wanted my kids to feel any of the financial hardship or pain of what I was going through. So they never noticed. So they, they, they grew up, you know, never knowing what their dad did. So they never saw 
they never saw me on stage till they were men. Till they were men, you know. Wow, what a story! That's so cool. It was a gift because how many how many parents can say I, I never missed a day out my child's life, you know? Especially a rock star. Yeah, we, well, all, all my contemporaries they're on their fourth or fifth wife, and they don't know their kids. You know, it's very rare that you you know you have that kind of relationship. You know, I was reading an article. There were hundreds of comments on this article that I was reading. And a couple of them, one in particular was, uh, it touched my heart because I have a son with autism who loves this song as well. He's high functioning autism, but this is a song that he listens to all the time and he runs around and gets him excited. But there was a man out of uh, Washington, I think his name was Jeremy, and he talked about how his son who could barely speak who has autism, that he actually introduced the song to his dad, this guy telling the story that he had noticed that he had found it on his iPad and he was kind of singing along with it. And it became something that was, uh, you know, very inspirational to his son. And then it became something to him. And he said, thank you, John, for this song, for, for inspiring my son. You just don't know that the, the impact that, that you have, um, in so many ways, but those are, those are two stories, my own son and, and his son, uh, both with autism that has, has been such an inspiration. I'm deeply touched. Thank you so much. I'm deeply, deeply touched. It's hard to believe that it's been almost 40 years. Yeah, man. That this yeah. song has been such a massive hit. What are your feelings about this song now, as opposed to in 85 and in the legacy of this song? There, are, I've done loads of other songs, but if you're known for that thing, I mean, you're blessed, aren't you? I mean, you know, all these people in the world, all these people trying, all these incredibly God-blessed you know, universe blessed people and you're amongst them. So, you know, I'm just happy. And uh, as I say, you know, uh, I'm carrying the, I'm carrying the torch. I'm 70 years old and I just spent the, the last two years being a movie director. I put all my money into a, a, a short film about two disabled guys and made this movie and the song features in that in a different way. It, I'm so passionate. I only want to do good and it sounds awfully corny, but that's what keeps me going. I want to. I do want to entertain, but I, I kind of want to try and make a difference because a lot of people in the world, you know, just making that one little change, just in that one moment, can can make a difference. You know, big difference. So John Parr made a uh, new documentary. It's going to be coming out soon. Look for that. We'll tell you about it below. Make sure to leave us a comment about John Parr and this number one smash, Shane Holmes, Fire Man in Motion. What are your memories of this all-time anthem? Let's discuss it in the comments. The story, such an inspirational story. I love this song, and I love David Foster's production. He's just a master. Let's have a great discussion below. If you like our channel, we invite you to subscribe below. We'd love to have you. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends.